that being said, um, thanks. I hope this was short and sweet and fun. Um, that that's kind of the idea. If again, if there's anything that's unclear, now is the time to ask. I will stay put until I'm told I'm allowed to go. Um, and uh, otherwise, feel free to to catch me on LinkedIn uh, with um, with my first name and my last name, and then you know add me there, and I'll I'll be happy to to answer any questions that you that you don't want to ask here over LinkedIn as well, if that's the case. Yes, thank you so much, Fritz. That was sure. Wait. Enlightening. Um, I know a lot of our students here today uh, have marketing classes at the university uh, in the United States. So uh, I'd like to now open the floor uh, for you to write your questions in the chat box for Fritz, whether it's about the presentation or about his the podcast. Um, just, you know, kindly take a moment, write your questions in the chat, um, because, again, this is your opportunity to, to ask him anything. So. Uh, you can go ahead and write it and then and then I'll read them out. Yes, don't be shy. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> There's a familiar name in the chat. Uh, off the top of your head, could you name some hospitality firms whose marketing campaigns you find very inspirational and very well executed? Hi, Lou. Nice to see you. Um, yeah, phew. yeah, there's some cool ones for sure. Um, there's definitely some cool ones. I So... It depends on how traditional you want this answer. So you're going to have to tell me if you want a traditional answer like, or if you want something that's a little bit outside the box and cool. I think to this day, um, one of the coolest, if you want to backtrack a little bit, and I would suggest you do because I, I strongly think it's one of the coolest loyalty marketing um, campaigns that have ever been created was Starwood Preferred Guest. Now, this is a while ago. Um, Starwood used to be one of the one of the bigger uh, hotel groups. They were bought by Marriott a couple of years ago. Um, but if you go back to some of the marketing strategies, and they're and they're publicly available now on the internet. If you go back to some of the marketing strategies of Star Preferred Guest, Star Preferred Guest was the loyalty program of SPG, um, of of Starwood Hotels, and they were widely seen by 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 a mile as probably the most forward thinking, modern, and cool loyalty program at the time. Granted, this was 2016, 2017. Um, and the reason they were they were they were perceived so different is because they did they they were the first ones to really understand okay let's look at loyalty from an entirely different perspective and at marketing from an entirely different perspective, and let's not market hotel rooms because you know that it's obvious that that's what we have to offer, but let's market let's market lifestyle you know let's create something like W Hotels by the way still one of the cooler marketing brands as well in in, in certainly in hotels. Um, so, so those, that, that would be an obvious one, you know, start with preferred guests and the marketing strategies behind there. And, um, th that's really, that's really an exciting, um, uh, it was an exciting brand and exciting loads work because they were the, they were the first to really visibly do something different, uh, in, in, in that regard. If we, if you want to, if you want to hear something that's a little bit, um, a little bit, let's say more, more current, more up to date or more as of recent, um, yeah, there's there's definitely a couple that come to mind. I would look more at destination marketing. Um, there's a couple of very cool destination marketing, um, and I'm not going to spoil this. Um, but you want to look at a campaign that was called Holland, the original cool. Holland, obviously, being a different, uh, you know, it's part of the Netherlands, uh, sometimes perceived as the Netherlands, which is actually not true. But Holland, the original cool one of the smartest marketing campaigns I have seen in a long time. I think this was maybe two or three years ago. Um, it was a collaboration between Amsterdam, the city of Amsterdam, um, uh, uh, the country, the Netherlands and KLM, which is the national carrier. Um, so Holland, the original cool, definitely a, definitely a spicy campaign as well. Um, and just in terms of branding and marketing efforts, um, I would suggest looking at Nikki beach. Um, Probably most of you will have heard this. I probably don't need to explain this in much detail. They have a beach club. Um, and what very few people actually know, they actually also have hotels. Um, so that's definitely one I would uh, I would look at in that regard. I hope that answers the question, Lou. If not, you know where to find me. As a new business, what do you recommend to gain popularity on social media or digitally when you have zero reviews yet or are not well, very well known? As a business, what do you recommend to gain popularity on social media or digitally when you have zero views yet or not? Okay, um, hey, Camila, this is a this is a very tricky question, uh, and it is Thursday evening, so I definitely would have needed a gin and tonic for this one. No, I'm kidding. The reason I'm answering this is because or I'm saying that is because this entirely depends on the business. Okay, are, are we talking? Are we talking 
so I, I would assume we're talking something in a hospitality. Are we talking hotel? Are we talking some form of accommodation? Are we talking bed and breakfast? Are we talking airline? Are we talking restaurant? Uh, that that will entirely depend. Um, I think I think there's a strong angle where hotel. Okay, fine. Um, okay, so if you're if you're a small hotel, let's assume you're an individual hotel and not part of a brand. Um, there's different ways to go about gaining recognition. Number one is clearly join some form of marketing or affiliation group. And there's thousands of them that are, in some cases, even pretty cool. One of the cooler ones to look at, clearly, and I'm saying that because they're about three kilometers from my office, uh, is, is Design Hotels. Design Hotels is a, was originally something that curated small individual hotels into its own sort of, if you so want, um, yeah, association. And, and, and then that obviously gives you some traction. The other way uh, to do it is... Um, to have something what we call um, lead-based marketing. And lead-based marketing, Camilla, is um, something that we call or something that we look at in terms of you want to you want to base your strategies and your efforts on a lead. Okay, so what's what's your lead? And and I, I'm pretty sure if you all study marketing, I don't explain the word lead and, and what a lead is. Um, but you want to you want to create something that that is lead-based and that will immediately target some form of connection to your to your product brand. In this case, a hotel. Um, so, so that those are the two ways of, of of immediately going forward. Adapt to your to your strengths and weaknesses. If you have a product that is nice, that has a certain angle of maybe architecture, maybe interior design, maybe you know some some, some cool rooms. Adapt to that, um, and 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 use that to to showcase it. But but lead based marketing and some form of marketing affiliation would be my my first two ways if I were to do it with a hotel myself. Oh boy. Taken off. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with Manuel next. Uh, in the context of hotels, how can personalized marketing be effectively utilized to enhance guest experiences and loyalty? Haha. -ha. Manuel, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> um, can we do another workshop on that? Is my question to, uh, to come No, listen, it, it needs to be, right? Certainly in this day and age, do you really think between you and me, Manuel, and you know, we'll, we'll pretend nobody else is here, uh, do you really think loyalty is still a thing, Manuel? I think we can both agree it's not, right? The same guy who's telling you how loyal he is to Hilton, he has three other loyalty cards, Marriott, uh, Accor, and um, what else is there? To, uh, to, um, what are they called? Uh, Trip or, or, or whatever. Yeah, Mama Shelter, doesn't matter. Loyalty doesn't exist. Loyalty in the way that we understand it doesn't exist anymore. Loyalty has clearly become price-led with exceptions. I get that, but it's clearly become more price-led. So having a personalized marketing effort of some sort, way and another to enhance your, your guest experience is, is, is going to help you for sure. Um, and the reason it will do that is because you will build a connection with somebody who otherwise has no connection to you because the loyalty connection that you previously were told and are probably still told in marketing to some extent, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't exist anymore in, in that sense. Right. You, you, when you, when you think of travel, that, that component has certainly changed again, because travel is now more available to, to, to more people. And there's, there's a greater offering. You know, if you're looking for a bed and breakfast, fine, you can get that. If you're looking for a three star, fine, you can get that. If you're looking for five star, you can get that. Right. And to the point where, um, and, and my favorite way of answering this, Manuel, when I get asked about personalized marketing is look at the filters you can now set when searching an, an overnight on booking.com. Just, just do that. Go to booking.com, select overnight hotel and click on filter. It's crazy. I mean, the amount of filters you can now set is, is silly. Um, so, so there is no loyalty. You know, loyalty is dead. Long live loyalty. Um, and, and you need to find ways to build loyalty through personalized incentives. And that, and that can be as simple as the happy birthday email to Kimberly because she's been a guest at your hotel and you've got her date of birth. And, and you're creating some form of connection there. It can be that easy. And I, and I again, would strongly recommend to do it. Alberto, I love your name, Alberto. Bravo. Um, which online platform do you think is currently the most important for a hotel that wants to invest in marketing and make itself known, e.g. social media website, ETC? Alberto, anybody that gives you a different answer than your own website, please, please, please give them my email address, okay? Because I can easily turn them into a client of mine. The answer has to be website. There is, there is, there's no, there's no two, there's no, there's no discussion there. There's no, there's no two op op opposing opponents here. It, it, it's, it's clearly website. It's where it all starts. It's where you make cash. It's where you don't earn cash on Instagram. You can use Instagram to get people to your website to then earn cash. Okay. But, but the, the, the website is where it all connects. It's where it all starts. If that does not work to your personas, to your target group, 
you know, and, and is and at least works. Again, like I said previously, doesn't have to be fancy, glowy, flashy, but it needs to work. And if it doesn't do that, then then you're losing money. And worse comes to worse comes to worse, you're losing money to 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 the OTAs. You're losing money to booking.com, to Expedia, and they take a sturdy 20% in worst case scenario of every booking you make or you get. Right. So so the answer here clearly has to be website. Um, and, and, and then after that, I would probably say, again, depends on where you are in the world and depends on which target groups you have on the planet. If you're targeting Western European users, maybe Americans, um, I'm, I'm going to say Instagram. Um, if you're targeting Middle Eastern travelers, it's probably also Instagram. And if we're talking about Asia, it gets a little bit more complicated because we have things there like WeChat, which would be a, a whole different workshop. Uh, if you're talking um, uh, Africa, then that's a whole different story as well because there's different platforms there as well. So it depends a little bit on the geography, but generally we can go with Instagram if we're talking Western Europe. Uh, Daniela, love that. I'm five stars for the names that you have in your courses, Kimberly. Well done. Um, if a new member in a hotel, uh, oh, sorry, if I am a new member in a hotel, what are the clues to identify the strengths and weaknesses to suggest the new changes? If I am a new member in a hotel, what are the clues to identify the strengths and weaknesses to suggest the new changes? I assume, Daniela, I'm going to base this answer on the assumption that you mean strengths and weaknesses in your online marketing, because if we're talking operations, then I, I listen, I'm the wrong guy. Um, but if we're talking online marketing, um, then, then my answer would be, um, you want to address this with facts, okay? You want to go ahead and say, hey, um, th this is what we're doing in the online world. I've seen our competitors are doing this. And I know that my, you know, your personas or our personas of travelers that we want to target to our hotel, they're looking for this. And if that doesn't match, then there's clearly an issue, right? And then you can go to your superior or to somebody in the team and say, hey, I'd like to tackle this. I've looked at what we're doing. I've looked at what my competitors are doing. And I've looked at who we're targeting um, and what they want. And, and it doesn't match. Um, so there, there's a discrepancy there that you want to look at. Um, you know, don't, don't and, and trust me, I've seen this happen. And, and we've had interns here in the office who have then gone uh, and done something else. And they went to a hotel and said, oh, I was an agency and everything we're doing here is crap. Don't, please don't, please don't have that conversation because I get a nasty phone call. Um, and, and that's, you know, that's not what I'm trying to do. Um, so, so please base it on some form of theory and facts. Um, but the, the easy way is, hey, this is what we're doing. This is what the competition is doing. And this is what, what, you know, our target groups want and are looking for. And you can research that. You know, again, this leads back to my research conversation. It's not fun, but it's it's the base of what we do. Jason, I have a question. Great presentation, first of all. Appreciate it, Jason. Beer is on you. And thank you for the time. In the modern era, with so with some many external factors influencing the modern traveler, from economic downfall globally to constantly changing trends or traveler needs, would you advise pertaining to developing strategies combined with marketing to rather focus on in on relevant niche markets, the aim to maximize effort and accuracy of offerings rather than large general markets in order to become more effective. Uh, Jason, that is that is a, a very sophisticated question. Well done, young man. Um, it's, a, it's a good point. And, I, and I, I was trying to get at that earlier when I said, with very few exceptions, make sure you fish in the right pond and you fish in a pond where you can where you have the chance of succeeding in 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 a good and somewhat you know somewhat acceptable cost of acquisition so i'm going to i'm going to take your answer and say this entirely depends on the cost of acquisition if it's a market that you're trying to target that is highly competitive but the cost of acquisition is still relatively low do it okay it it doesn't it doesn't hurt you if if on the other hand it's a highly competitive market and the cost of acquisition is high and is abnormally high maybe even and you're still going for it and you're seeing that it, it's costing you stupid amounts to get a single guest into your hotel room of your target group, then, then there's a problem there that, that you need to address, right? And then there's two options. Either change your target segment, which is usually quite difficult to do because you need to change product and, and, and service and so on and so forth, or try and change the way you're, you're attracting them, i.e. the ponds I was talking about. And the reason, again, the reason I'm using ponds and fishing and, and Jeff, Jesse, and Jason uh, previously in my examples is because they're and you can see this now, they're, they're easy to memory, right? To, to, to remember, right? So think of the ponds. And if you're in a pond where there's, there's a lot of fishing going on and your cost of acquisition is super high, change, change something, the pond or the cost of acquisition by, you know, trying to get to the pond in a different way. Um, so it, it's, your question is to the point. Your question is, is probably more so to the point now than it maybe it was five years ago. I think that's a conversation that's only come up recently, certainly from the experience my team and I have made. Um, you know, people are starting to question, is it worth for me 
to target this, this and that persona? Or is it too expensive and not worth our time and effort? Um, so, so my answer is, again, it depends. I'm sorry, you know, I've got the consulting thing in me. I'm paid to do it. So, hey, um, but, but it's a strong, in, it's a stronger, it depends, uh, Jason, in relation to your answer, in relation to cost of acquisition. Yeah, and, and the cost of acquisition is something you can very easily uh, calculate. It's a, it's a very simple model. It's a very simple formula. Um, so there's, there's, there's no news there. We've ran way over. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. It's okay. It's fine because I, I'm very happy that there are, you know, questions being asked. So it's a big fear of mine if it just goes radio silent. So I'm okay with, you know, uh, the engagement. We have one more if we have more Yeah, time. go for it. I, I'm, I'm for Adrian. it. Go ahead. Yeah. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, Adrian, um, how would you initiate strategies to attract travelers from a distant market? Let's say to target Swiss tourists when your hotel is located in the Caribbean. By the way, amazing talk. Thanks a lot. Adrian, beers on you. Um, it's going to be a good night for me. Um, my pleasure. Um, listen, there's, there's, there's no. Um, how am I going to put this? Um, we don't need to think about marketing and boundaries anymore. So, so I understand where your question is coming from in terms of distant markets. Uh, the the good news is there's there's no boundaries in marketing anymore. I can I can easily target with social media ads, with with Google ads. Um, with display ads, with YouTube ads, with streaming ads in Twitch or, or, or any of the streaming platforms, I can easily choose where my target demographic is located. So that's not a problem. Um, and, and push comes to shove, you can get, it's probably a little bit more expensive, but you can get an agency that works in your target region to promote your hotel in the Caribbean. And there is a lot of companies that do that. And, and if you want to have a very prominent example, um, I can give you one that will absolutely blow everyone's mind in this call. If you want to look at something that is going to be revolutionizing the world in terms of traveling, I suggest you look at something that is called Neom. And I will type this into the chat because it's a little weird to spell. Neom. Neom is a project, is one of the super projects that Saudi Arabia is currently undergoing to attract tourism to their country. And they have a very peculiar problem. And that is that they're based in Saudi Arabia. Neom are, are, are artificial cities that they're building from scratch where there is nothing today. Um, and they have a, they have the, they're facing the exact problem that you're addressing, Adrian. You know, they're based in Saudi Arabia, which is kind of the western, the west coast of the Middle East, which is far away from, from most affluent travelers. It's far away from Europe. It's far away from the US. It's far away from Asia. Um, you know, it's, it's a good six, eight, 12 hour flight. Um, and they're facing exactly this problem. And they're doing an, an astonishingly good job of doing it. Um, and, and I'm not saying that because we're helping them. That's not the point. Um, but they've, they've had some, some very, very good feedback. Granted, it's Saudi Arabia, not the easiest country to promote for obvious political reasons. Um, but they're doing a very good job. So if you, if you want to look at an example, Adrian, that, that would be my suggestion. Look at Neom, um, a spectacular project all in all. So it's, it's good to be informed if you're studying hospitality, like I think most of you are. It's good to be informed about some of the biggest projects in hospitality currently on the, around the globe. And that is certainly up on that list. Um, and, and to answer your question, Adrian, there's, there's no limits anymore in marketing. You know, I can, I can run an ad for you in 20 minutes in, in Tokyo, no problem. Um, and then target the traveler. The one thing I will say, Adrian, make sure when you target the Swiss tourist, you target them in a way that they want to be targeted, right? Your Caribbean shaky music approach in terms of your ad is probably not going to work with the fairly stiff Swiss. I've studied there, so I, I would know, um, you know, the Swiss are not, you're not going to get the Swiss to get into the shaky music kind of mood. That's, it's simply not going to happen in Switzerland. I, 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 I hate to, I hate to break it to you. Um, you know, but if you, if you have a, a great civil and a straightforward uh, ad there for the Swiss, then, then they'll come along. Um, so, so, you know, if you target somebody far away, target them in a way that they want to be targeted, but market your product as if, as if it was close to home. Um, there's no limits there anymore. I'm going to keep going, Kimberly, until you shout at me. Um, yeah, keep going. It's good. Okay. Um, Ankush, hi. Thank you for the presentation. If you are trying to build a business in an area where some successful business already exists, what would be a great way to stand, start in order to stand out? Um, again, uh, Ankush, I'm going to apply this to hospitality because it's the only thing I'm fairly good at. Um, so, so forgive me if we're talking a restaurant or hotel or something of the sort, if you're trying to start out. Uh, three things. Uh, know, your, know your USP. Okay. When you, when you start out, in your business plan, and I've, 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 you know, we've, we're, we're partially invested in some other businesses. And the one thing I ask, you know, people when they start a company and they come to us and present it, I say, before we start, what's your USP? What, what are you good at? And, and, and 
and don't, you know, don't, don't overthink it. Don't make it too complicated. Don't, there's going to be people who ask, okay, what need are you solving? And has anybody else been doing it? Forget that. Th that's not important. My first question is, d tell me what your USP is. What are you good at? What makes you different? And, and whether you're solving a need or not, whether it's, whether it's a profitable business model, that can come down further down the road. But give me a USP and, and give me something um, that you're that you're going to be better at, and then market that. You know, market your USP. Say hi, hi, I'm a new hotel, and I have four PlayStation Fives in the lobby, and you can come play FIFA 24. I guess is out whenever you want. Okay, uh, give me give me something that I can market and run with. And then the other thing, um, or th that's the first thing. So give me a USP. The second thing is is be good at showcasing your product. And what I mean with that is have good photos, good videos, good texts, have a good tone of voice, sounds the same, be recognizable. You know, give me give me some 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 recognizability to your brand, to your product. Um, and and write that down somewhere. You know, have the color codes, have the text, have the tone of voice, have it written down somewhere that when you write something, when you take a picture of something, you can look back at it and say, okay, this is this is how on, how I want to do it. Um, and then the third thing. And that's probably a little bit tricky, uh, depending on what it is you want to start off in terms of your, uh, in in uh, in terms of your business. Um, is is and this is maybe a little bit weird, but is make sure that you can withstand criticism. Okay, play the devil's advocate. If if somebody comes to your new business and says this is shit because Kimberly threw a plate at my face when serving me the dish. Okay, well then clearly that's something that's subjective, and that's probably Kimberly will only hopefully do that once. And, and in that case, it's something that we can solve, all right? Give, get yourself some criticism into the building and, and see what you can do with that criticism. Can you rebuttal it? Is it something that you can work on or is it, you know, is it a true criticism? And then, and then there's clearly a problem there with your business. But if you can withstand criticism and face it, and you're not going to be perfect, but if you can explain the weaknesses that you have, then by all means, um, I think you have a, a good business case on your hands. I think somebody was raising their hand and I, I don't really know how to check that. So I'm going to leave that with you, Kimberly. But... I will um, quickly go on to the to the next question, uh, which is from Ishan. Um, how can hotels effectively tailor their marketing strategies to attract and accommodate digital nomads? <laughs> yeah, digital nomads. That's uh, that's one of my. It's one of the biggest uh, to target groups at the moment are these digital nomads, and they are tricky. Let me tell you, Ishan. Uh, considering their specific needs for work friendly amenities. Yep. Authentic local experiences. Yep. And a tech savvy environment. Yep. Absolutely true. It, it, just so everybody knows, we're talking about digital nomads as a very specific or relatively specific persona. Usually, you know, we're talking about Gen Y here. Um, we're we're talking about people that are between the age of 25 and 35, um, maybe 40, uh, and they're 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 looking to 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 travel and and work at the same time. So, uh, you know, usually people that have a job that is independent of where they are located. Uh, they're tricky, Ishan. They are really tricky, and I, I will, I will, you know, I, I think it would blow the time frame of what we have available to explain this in much detail. I, I, as stupid as it sounds, um, you can get them with what we call a very clean marketing, and clean marketing means um, very clean images, very to the point texts, very short texts, not a lot of blah blah, um, very clear. You, probably want to work with bullet points. If you stay with us, this is what you get. Boom, 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 boom. Good Wi-Fi, um, you know, uh, access to the beach or something like that. You, you want to make it very clean. Uh, clean marketing is a, is a marketing trend that's relatively new um, and that, that we've we found that, um, that, that especially works well on digital nomads because usually, you know, what we would do in, in ads previously was storytelling, you know, tell a story and this, we're cool because of this and that and look at our sexy gym and our great pool and we have beautiful men and women in the, in the bar and screw that. The digital nomad doesn't care. He, he wants it. He wants it quick. He wants it sharp and to the point. Um, that's kind of the, the 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 results that we've been getting from from this. And there's 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 a strong, 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 uh, a case to attract these guys because they are not very budget sensitive. They they don't care if you charge them two fifty per night, no problem, no questions asked, and that is a large, large, large average rate. Um, so so th they're they're an interesting group. They're not easy, um, but they're definitely worth considering. And and everything that you've written is correct. Work friendly amenities, uh, local experiences. <clears throat> when they're done with their work day, they want to know if you're in if you're in Bangkok. Uh, it, when they're done with work, they want to know where they can get authentic Thai food and eat you know, the most spicy food and then not feel well for three days. They, they don't care. That's exactly what they're looking for. Um, so you're, I think you're, you're on the right way, Ishan. And my, and my answer to your question would be clean, clean marketing. 
Ali, okay, no, I'm going stop, to stop. have to interrupt you here. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> um, That's but fine. I mean, oh, we could we could do this another time as well. I mean, because I I truly know that everyone who has participated and joined today have loved listening to your voice and your knowledge and your experience. So thank you, Fritz, and sure. to Smack. Uh, for being our guest lecturer. Um, I also want to say thank you for everyone who participated, asked the questions. Um, we, you know, we truly appreciate you showing up. I know it's summer um, and I know, you know, you might not be having classes, but um, I think this was a really great class that, you know, an extra class and an extra bonus class that you got to learn um, from Fritz himself. Um, so, that will be the end of today's guest lecture. Uh, don't forget for everyone to stay connected with us on social media just so you're in the loop about up any upcoming events. Um, I would really strongly encourage you to take a listen to the podcast. And that's me saying that, okay? Not you. <laughs> I'll promote <laughs> it myself. Um, but really, truly try to take a listen because... Um, they're very, very quite quite interesting. Um, and I know all of our students are are working in hospitality. So I think you can really, really learn a lot of things from them. So um, I wish everyone a great day ahead, a uh, good night's sleep if you're going to bed um, or if you're just getting started on your day. Again, thank you so much, Fritz, um, to sure. snack everyone. Um, I, yeah, thank you so much. I'll pass, I'll pass it along. Have a nice day, guys. Thank you. Take care. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.